Hi, and welcome to Introsoft Solutions video tutorial. My name is Nicholas Lee. In this video, I'll show you how to handle push notifications using Crosslight. Before you continue, it is recommended that you have created a new Crosslight business app by following the video in our YouTube channel, which has been previously covered in our video. You can also follow this video step by step in our developer center. This video will demonstrate the Mac version of this guide. At the end of this video, you will learn how to configure push notifications in iOS, Android, and Windows Phone apps. We have streamlined most of the push notification processes, starting from the device registration to receive the device token, as well as saving the device token to the database for easy maintenance. If you look at the app service file contained in the core project of the infrastructure folder, we have three entry points for streamline push notification process. Starting from registering the device for push notification, which is requesting a device token to the platform store service. For an iOS device, this means that the iOS device will request the device token to the App Store and for Android device to the Play Store. Also, Windows Phone to Windows Store. After the device token is received, the Crosslight app will forward this directly to the Web API server to save into the database. The last entry point is the onNotificationReceive method, which by default will show a toast presenter if the app is running. First, let's try push notifications in iOS. Open up Keychain Access. Let's create a certificate signing request to request the certificate from the IRS portal. You can do this by clicking Keychain Access, Certificate Assistant. If you see something like this, that means you're doing it wrong. So to overcome, select a certificate and try again. You should see Request a Certificate from a Certificate Authority. Click on that, enter the details. and save it to disk. For easy maintenance, I'll create a new folder that will hold our push notification files. Notice that after we have created the certificate signing request file, we will end up with two new keys, which is the private key and the public key. Afterwards, let's open up the iOS dev portal. Log in using your iOS developer account. First, we'll create a new app ID for our app. Click on identifiers. Click the plus button. Enter description. You will need to enter the explicit app ID to use push notifications. I'll enter in com intersoft push test. Make sure that the bundle ID here corresponds to the info.p list in the iOS app. Also tick the push notifications options here. Submit. Now let's create a new certificate using the push ID that we have just registered. Click the plus button. Choose this one. Use the new app ID. Upload the certificate signing request that we have created earlier using Keychain Access. Download and save the certificate.
export the private key from the keychain access. I'm going to name this as push key. Enter the password. You should have three items for now. Last one is we need to create a provisioning profile to be able to deploy the app into our iOS device as this app cannot be used with iOS simulator. The iOS simulator cannot receive push notifications. Therefore, you will need an iOS device to get this app working. Click on plus. Development. Choose the app ID. Take all certificates that applies. Take all the devices that apply. Give it a profile name. I'll name it as push test. Download the provisioning profile. Now plug in your iOS device. Open up Xcode. Go to Window, Organizer. Click on the profile that we have just downloaded. You should see that the provisional profile will now be registered to your device. That means we're ready to deploy the app using the provisioning profile that we have just registered. Go to Xamarin Studio, double click on the project properties of the iOS project, click on bundle signing, choose the identity and choose the provisioning profile that we have just created. Now let's deploy this app into our iOS device. I'm going to use the Reflector app to let you see what's going on in my iOS device. You will see that this app would like to send you push notifications. Click on OK. Afterwards, let's check the web API project to see if the device token is registered with our database. Check out the device tokens table. You'll see that the iOS device is successfully registered with the App Store to receive push notifications. Before you continue, We'll need to do a few more things. Check out our page in our in the developer center, preparing Apple push notification service. Here you'll need to execute a few commands to create the PEM file as well as the private key to use with our web API server to be able to send push notifications to our iOS device. Open up terminal. I'm going to navigate to the push notifications files folder here. Execute these commands. If you look at the folder now, you will have a private key. You will need to use this private key and copy it to the web API server. Let's do this now.
Afterwards, open global.asx.cs. You will need to insert a new line here, still on the same page. You can use this line and enter it in the globalassets.cs. This corresponds to the location of the private key as well as the password, which is optional. This one corresponds to the bundle ID that we have registered with our app. Let's run the web API project. We have provided a sample page for you to easily send push notifications to your device. Enter your notification. You'll see that the device receives push notifications. Let's see what happens if the app is put to suspended state. This concludes the push notifications tutorial for iOS. Next, I'll show you how to handle push notifications for Android. Now, I'm going to show you how to handle push notifications in Android. Handling push notifications in Android is relatively easy. Navigate to, to this page, cloud.google.com slash console. Create a new project, if needed. I'm going to name this as push test. What you want to do is go to the APIs and auth and activate the Google Cloud Messaging for Android. After you successfully enable the feature, go to the credentials, create a new key for public API access, and create a new server key. Create Copy the API key here, go to the web API project, open up global.asx.cs file, and enter the Google API server key. Also, open up app service and enter the Google project number here. You can get this from overview, the project number here. Copy it here. Now you're ready to receive push notifications. Similar to iOS, you can receive push notifications using only Android devices and not the emulator. This is because the device needs to be registered directly with the Play Store to be able to receive push notifications. Let's run this project. I'm going to use a small tool called Android Screen Monitor to let you see what's going on in my Android device. Now let's check whether our app has successfully registered the device token by again checking the device tokens table from the web API project. You can see that the Android device has successfully registered to our device tokens table and ready to, see, to receive push notifications. Let's try to send a push notification to our Android device. You can see that the device has received a push notification. Let's see what happens if the app is not running. You can see that the push notification goes through the notification center, which will launch the app when you click on it. This concludes the Android section for push notifications. Next, I'll show you how to handle push notifications in Windows Phone. Now, I'll show you how to handle push notifications in Windows Phone. Currently, I'm using the Project My Screen app for Windows Phone 8.1 to let you guys see what's under the hood.
to run the project on the device, choose the build option and select configuration manager. Change the platform to ARM and deploy to the device. Push notifications by default works out of the box and you don't have to do any configuration at all. You can change, however, the Windows Phone channel name if you wish to. Let's check whether the device token has successfully registered to our database. As you can see, the Windows Phone device has successfully registered to our device tokens table and ready to receive push notifications. Let's send the notification now. As you can see, the Windows Phone has successfully received notifications. Let's see what happens if the app is not running. Let's send the push notification one more time. I'm currently using the Windows Phone 8.1 Developer Preview. When you touch it, it goes right into the application. This concludes the Windows Phone section on how to handle push notifications.